Hi there everyone, so I promised last week that I was going to do a video on the environment light and I never got around to doing it so I'm just going to do it today and talk you through what I was talking about. So there's sort of a couple of methods to using the environment light and the sun, uh, the sun sky or physical sky, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm just going to quickly go through those now. Um, so I've got one environment light in the scene, uh, inside here, I'll, I'll get rid of that one. Um, I've just got a sun, a uh, physical sky, sorry. And I always attach the environment light. So this is an environment light. Um, I'll change it to call it that. Um, I always, if I'm doing a physical sky thing, I attach the environment light as the sort of location of the sun because I just find it quite easy to edit. So you can then grab the environment light and rotate it around and um, it will update and it looks, it's just easier to control because you've only got one light to um, meddle with and generally it just looks looks really nice and you can just rotate your environment light around. So that is kind of one method. You can control the size of the sun disk with these things. Um, and it looks, to be honest, I think it looks really nice just doing it this way. The only thing you've got to watch out for, if your sun disk is too small, I think the um, MIS samples struggle to find the bright dot in the sky, so you might need to up this to higher. Some, to be honest, 2048 is probably okay for most things, um, and I think Lightway's actually got a bit better at however it finds um, the sun in the sky somehow. Um, but yeah, say so if you've got really low MIS samples like 256, it doesn't find the sun at all when it's such a tiny scale. But actually, light, Lightwave's got a bit better with this, actually. It seems to be a lot better than it was. So you can actually just do it at 512 and it still seems to find the sun disk on its defaults. Um, so I'm going to talk about one of the other methods as well, which is if you... So in this scene, this is if you want even more control, I suppose. Um, I'll, I've got a, a sun, an actual physical sun light as well. So if I turn that on. So you can't really, or you don't, want both in the scene at the same time. I've now got a sun disk here, which is being calculated by the environment light and casting a shadow. And then I've got another sun over here which is casting another shadow, which is not ideal. So what you really want to do is make sure that you go into your physical sky and turn, I guess, just turn the size of the sun down to zero. And then, uh, and then you control the sun's position using the actual sunlight. Now this isn't tied, if I go in here, I need to I need to change this to be the sunlight so the sky will change um, when you move the sun around. Uh, and if I lower it on the horizon, so now we have this disk in the sky which is created by this sunlight, and you can change the size of it, um, and all this stuff. So that is the other way of creating a a sun, physical sun. Um, whoa! Uh, so that's the other way of creating physical sun. Um, if you're doing arc beers or something like that. And you can, I, I guess the benefit of doing it this way is, uh, 
you don't you don't get the noisiness I guess from using um, uh, an environment light with a sun disk built into it but to be honest I I can't personally see the added benefit unless you want to tweak some of the the like you can make the sun color yellow or red and then you get a, like a red spec specular um, but to be honest if you just want it to look real you're better off just doing it the old way um, uh, well not the old way doing adding it to the environment light or using uh, this with the sun disk like set to its defaults so I think if you so you can have two disks here which um, if you size 25 so this is now this has now got two sun disks in the sky both in the same location which gives you I mean you can't really see the issue here but um, if I unlink one of these so look you've got double sun disk so you've got the one from this light and you've got the one from the environment light and that is what I was trying to explain in the post you don't want double um, sunlight because it will either affect render times or um, make your specular look a bit weird it might look nice it might look nicer and you're like going oh that looks really nice I, um, and when I turn this off it looks shit but actually it's better um, to maintain it physically correct um, and I guess that's all I was trying to say really uh, you can use a distant light here but you won't you won't get the effect of it um, against the physical physical sky but you can quite equally use, use a, a distant light in here as well I hope that sort of covers most things if you've got any questions just give me a shout on in the comment section I suppose and have a good weekend see ya